Hey guys, Jamie from Gildbrook Farm and today we're going to take you along as we show you how we're going to install a solar gate opener on our main gate. But first, a couple channel announcements. The first is we'd like to invite you all over to check out our new website, guildbrookfarm.com. Uh, we've been working really hard on this over the last couple of months. We realized um, a lot of different comments on our YouTube channel, people are saying, hey Jamie, you ought to write some stories or you ought to do a video on X, Y, and Z. And it's stuff that we've already done. And um, we realized that our content's not all that easy to find. So we restructured it in a whole new way on our website. And also there is content on the website that is not on our YouTube channel. Like for instance, uh, the most recent post is on how I meal plan. It's a easy strategy for how you can quickly get get meals on the table and please everyone. So we would like to invite you all over to check out um, guildbrookfarm.com. It's our new website. Let us know what you think, if you like it or not, or just leave your comments down below. The second announcement is if you guys watch my video on progress, I got my shirt. Next up is The Rock, and I believe that's a hundred, uh, I have to go up about a hundred times before I get The Rock. So now on to Jeremy, we're gonna show you how to install this gate. Open it gate opener. Yeah. So today we're putting in a solar powered automatic gate opener for our main gate. Uh, as many of you know, we share this drive with another property and uh, between the two of us, we've got a good handful of guests coming and going. Uh, so we needed something so we don't have to stop the car, open the gate, get out, close the gate. It was getting to be a little bit annoying and we definitely want to have the gate closed when, uh, you know, most of the time. So I've worked with a few different types of gate openers. Uh, some you can get at Tractor Supply or Home Depot. Um, some are a little bit more expensive than others. Some have features, others don't. Uh, we went with a setup that I think will meet our needs. Um, uh, we wanted to be able to have a, a keypad for guests and so you're not handing out remote controls to people. I wanted something that would work off batteries and charge with solar panels. Uh, so that was a requirement and we needed to be able to open uh, a 16 foot tube gate. So uh, let's see, the stuff that we ended up getting meets all those needs. Uh, we got a lock, we got an exit sensor, uh, everything we need so to make this a secure gate but also kind of convenient for everyone who should have access to it. Um, what we went with is a ghost controls setup. Uh, the gate opener with the remote and the control center. And the reason I like this is it comes with the brackets you need for the tube gate, whereas most of the other brands don't, and you have to buy those like separate U-clamps to go over the tubes of your tube gate. This comes with everything you need. Uh, and it has a really good motor gear box. Uh, it also, we have uh, the, the keypad for entrance to open it up. We have a remote sensor, like I said, to exit. Uh, we have a zombie lock thing that they make that locks the gate and it talks to the main control board and unlocks itself before it tries to open it so it doesn't break anything. So it's all kind of a cool system that works together and we're going to start setting all this stuff up. But first I need to shore up the gate itself and replace the hinge pins with through bolts so that's what we're going to do first. You can see this gate kind of angles down, sort of drags a little bit over there. So there's not much adjustment. Uh, the post is nice and straight. It's set in concrete. It's also got a turnbuckle and a cable for adjustment if we have to. But these pins, you know, over time they just kind of wiggle and strip the threads and then they just pop out. So we're going to put replacement hinge, uh, bolt pin, pin bolt thingies in there that you know, go the whole way through and it'll allow you to adjust it so they won't pull out. Got the through bolts in, now we're gonna put the gate back on. All right, we got the new pins in. Raised it up six inches so we have a little bit more clearance. And uh, 
that does a much better job. So there we are. Now we'll start on the gate opener. Alright, so this is the uh, control arm. This is a standard model TSS-1 that you can uh, use with up to a 20-foot tube gate. Ours is 16-foot, so there should be plenty. It tells you in the book how much weight it'll handle. But this is the right one for our application, so... Okay, first we need to mount the base bracket for the opening the control arm and we want to mount our control arm pretty much in the center or as close to the center of the gate as possible so we're going to put our bracket here and level it up and mark it for the four holes and then drill our holes so this is the pre-assembled post bracket. Uh, now we got to make sure that we have at least four inches of clearance once this is mounted from here to here, from the pivot to the gate. And that's, let's see, that's three, that's four. All right, so we'll put the second pin through here and that fixes it so we have our four inches. Brackets on. Now we're going to put this arm on. And you put the pin in. And you put this bushing in here. Like that. Put your pin in. Now we will mount the control box. Alright, now we got the uh, dual battery box and it comes with batteries. They're uh, little 12 volt 7 amp hour batteries. So we're going to hook this up next so we have power. We didn't actually need to hook this up because this is for, well, they give you another cable if you get the battery box. So we're taking this out and we're running this one up there. All right, we did the wire. Now I got battery coming out of here, going up into the battery. Now I just hook our terminals up to each battery, put the cover on. We can put a lock on that. All right, next we're going to wire up the control arm to the control panel. And I'm going to run these control wires through the same strain relief as the battery. All right, so your control arm wires red, black, green, white go here to the first operator terminals. Red, black, green, white. And they give you a little baby screwdriver to tighten them down. And you want to make sure they're not pushed in too far so that you're not screwing down on just insulation. You want to make sure you're biting down on that wire. 
Okay, batteries are hooked up. Now we're going to test, make sure everything works. So there's an on switch under here. We're going to turn it on. All right. Now we're going to test that it opens and closes, and you use your jog these little buttons up here, or jog buttons. It allows you to open it, close it. Okay. This is a remote. We're going to make sure this works. Perfect. I have assembled the tube brackets which they give you, which is nice. So I'm going to con connect this front pin and then there's a bushing that goes on the bottom part. There we go. Put your cotter pin in. Ouch. Poke yourself in the finger. Now you got a bracket. And you can put that on there. And now we will close the gate the whole way. So, like that. Close your gate the whole way to the closed position. And that's where we're going to bolt her down. Okay, got it bolted on. And I got auto close set to 20 seconds. So when it opens, it stays open for 20 seconds. And then it automatically closes. Sweet. Uh, we're running out of daylight, so tomorrow I'm going to hook up the solar panel so it'll charge the battery and hook up a couple more gadgets and accessories to it. And uh, we'll see you there in a minute. It's the next day. I uh, kind of ran out of daylight last night and couldn't really film anymore. But then I got impatient and I was a little bit excited so I wanted to keep hooking this stuff up. So I hooked up the lock and the solar panel and the exit uh, sensor and I'll show you that in a second, show you how that's all hooked up. And really the only thing left is to do the keypad so that you can enter the code to come into the gate. And we're going to do that and wrap it up and test everything. This is called the zombie lock. This uh, is controlled by the uh, main control panel so that when you open it, it checks to see if the lock is there. If the lock is there, it disengages the lock before it activates the control arm to open the gate. That way it doesn't burn out the, the uh, control arm. And then <clears throat> that's uh, all over, goes over to here, control arm. And again, here's the batteries and the main control box and solar panel and then I also hooked up the exit sensor this is basically a electromechanical electromagnetic sensor wand on a 55 foot line that is over here that we will bury about 12 inches underground so when you pull up towards the gate this senses your vehicle and activates the gate okay here's the main control board so this is the lead for the control arm that opens the gate all four of these wires this is the lead for the zombie lock so that it can disengage the lock before it opens the control arm. This is the lead for the exit sensor, that electromagnetic wand. This is the lead for the solar panel. Uh, and then this is the battery. It goes up to there. And uh, 
This is how you set the limits of where how far to close it. Open, close, set. Then it has an auto close that you can set for up to 60 seconds after the gate is opened. Uh, we have it set to close after I think 45 seconds. And that's that. And here's the keypad. And this is the mounting pedestal that you stick onto a 4x4 post so that it sticks out so that you can reach the keypad from your vehicle. So we're going to mess with this now. Okay, here's the keypad, 2C batteries, housing, and I'll we'll mount this bad boy to here with all these screwy things and washery things. Okay, let's try it. Works! Well, there you go. Uh, we've had this installed and working for about a week now. Absolutely no problems. Everything works exactly like it's supposed to. Uh, I was pretty impressed with uh, how everything went together. Um, I didn't have to bend anything or mash anything like you usually do. Everything just fit. Uh, the instructions were really well written. I was impressed with that. So it was easy to put together and all the components work together like they're supposed to. The only one thing I had to adjust was the close limit on the gate. I didn't have it closing quite enough um, to for the latch to work. It was hitting the, the strike plate and bouncing off and then the lock was locking. So I just adjusted the, the uh, close limit a little bit tighter so it would bang up against that uh, latch plate and then the lock would, would lock. So that was my only adjustment and it works perfectly now. As you can see when it closes it'll uh, slow down, open the lock, seat and lock. So it works great. So if you're in the market for a uh, gate opener or a complete system like this, I definitely give Ghost Controls a look as an option for you. I'm real happy with it and uh, I'll leave a link below to uh, their website. You can check them out. Uh, other than that, uh, that wraps it up for this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.